Christ is risen. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather together today on the Sunday of the paralytic, we confront two paralyzed men, one in the person of Ananias, who was healed by the Apostle Peter, and the other, the main character of the pericope in today's Sunday Gospel. And so we have to explore what it means to be paralyzed. To be paralyzed means that you are not able to move. You are not able to walk as you want to. And this can take many different forms, whether it is physical, mental, or yes, spiritual. There are many things that can cause our paralysis. Our paralysis can be caused by a sudden accident. Our paralysis can be caused by an illness. And yes, our paralysis can be caused by sin. And we are going to explore a little bit about what that means. For according to Deuteronomy, the law was that if you did good, good things would happen to you. If you did evil, you would be punished. It was a very cut and dry way of understanding our life. That if something bad has happened to you, you must have sinned. You must have done something very, very bad. But we are confronted with the person that we celebrated yesterday in the person of the righteous Job. For Job is a man who didn't do anything particularly wrong, but rather God allowed him to fall to misfortune to showcase his faith and the glory of God. And all that Job lost was restored to him many times over. And so we have two concepts of suffering. Jobian, which is that our suffering is there to magnify God, and deuteronomical, our suffering is a result of sin. In today's gospel passage, we have a man who was by the sheep gate of Bethesda, and they had a tradition that every time an angel of the Lord would come down and trouble the water, whoever got into the water first would be healed of whatever disease he or she had. And this man had been suffering in his illness for 38 years. Can you imagine that? Suffering from your paralysis for 38 years. And Jesus Christ, who knows all things, knew how long he had been there and approached this man who was lying on his pallet and asked him a question. Do you want to be healed? Now, this might seem obvious. Of course we want to be healed. He's there, isn't he? He's, he's at the sheep gate of Bethesda. He's waiting for the angel. But the reality is, no, he doesn't. In the same way that many of us, when we want to be helped, when we want to be healed, we make overtures to say, I want help, I want to be healed. But we don't really want to be healed. Otherwise, we would take the necessary steps. And this is made evident in the sense that the paralyzed man, instead of saying, yes, Lord, heal me, he says to him, sir, every time the angel comes and I start to try to crawl to the water, and we see him crawling, trying to get there, another comes before me and gets in the water. I have no man to carry me. So he has acknowledged that he needs help. He can't get there on his own. Now he should be commended because he has not given up, but he's treading water at best and fooling himself at worst because he is not taking the steps necessary to fix his situation. Christianity 
according to St. Tertullian, is community. One Christian is no Christian. And so this man should have been looking to community to help him. But Jesus Christ commands him, take up your pallet and walk. And this was on a Sabbath. And so he immediately picks up his pallet and starts to walk around. And the Jews look at him and say, what are you doing? It's the Sabbath. You can't carry your bed. And the man said, well, the man who healed me said, pick up your pallet and walk, so I'm walking. Who did that? Who healed you? And again, we see this man's problem. He doesn't know. He has no idea who Jesus Christ is. And so he goes to the church, and he sits in the pews, just as you are now. And he's glorifying God, which is good. When we are healed, we should give glory to God. And Jesus Christ finds him in the temple and says to him, See, you're made well. Sin no more, lest something worse befall you. This is a very frightening sentence by our Lord and Savior. Sin no more, lest something worse befall you, which tells us two things. One, there are worse things than being paralyzed for 38 years. And two, it was the man's sin that caused this. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this is where we need to look to the idea of spiritual paralysis. When we cut ourselves off from God in sin, it's as if we have a communication line. It's like playing a game of telephone. If you recall with the two cans and a piece of string, and you cut the string, you've severed communication by your sin. When we go to confession, when we pray, when we repent, we tie a knot on that string and communication can resume. But the problem with sin, habitual sin, is that the more we sin, the more of a gap we're putting ourselves between us and God, where it gets to the point where we can't even move towards repentance. How many of you have ever wronged somebody, but you've let so much time go by that you're either embarrassed or ashamed to talk to that person and say, I'm sorry. You're paralyzed by fear. How many of us have been daunted by our sins to say, I can't take communion anymore. I can't come to church anymore. I don't belong there. This spiritual paralysis caused by sin is the work of our enemy, the devil. And Christ our God pierces through that. For you see, even though this man had no one to help him because his sins had alienated him from everybody, that's what sin does. When we are strong together, it is very hard to knock us down. Someone once said, we go to hell alone, we go to paradise together. And sin causes us to alienate, to push away anyone that might help us, anyone that might be there for us. But Christ our God, even in that time, is not afraid to go up to you and say, do you want to be healed? I have not rejected you. I have not left you alone. And even though you're paralyzed, even though you've gotten used to this life, 38 years of this life, I can heal you. Do you want to be healed? My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we should want to be healed. And we should accept the invitation because even when our friends, our family, our acquaintances abandon us, Christ will never abandon us. Christ will never cease trying to lift us up out of our paralysis. And further, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as I said, there were two paralytics today. The first, of course, is in the gospel. The other, the man Ananias, who is healed by Peter. And what does this show us? That we, 
just like Christ, can lift people up. We can bring them up again. Take them out of their paralysis. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be like the paralytic, coming in thanksgiving to God for healing us. Let us be like St. Peter, bringing the healing arm of Christ to all people and lift them up so that we can all, as one body, move towards Christ so that we are never paralyzed again, not by fear, not by spirituality, not by sin. For nothing, as St. Paul says in his epistle to the Romans, can separate us from the love of Christ our God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christos Anesti.